Attention shoppers, please move to the back of the store immediately. In the back of the store? I whispered to Daniel. Don't they mean the front of the store? To pay for our stuff? It was 8.50 p.m., 10 minutes until closing time. We had brought our two kids out on this late night Walmart excursion in the hopes of burning off some energy. Instead, they had just thrown tantrums for new Legos and Hot Wheels. It was a disaster. But apparently, the disaster was just beginning. Please move to the back of the store immediately. This is not a drill. I glanced around, but the other shoppers were just as confused as I was. An old lady looked up at the ceiling, scrunching her face. What the heck? A dark-haired woman asked her boyfriend, pushing a cart full of garden supplies. Didn't you hear? An older man said, leaning over his cart of bottled water and canned food. We're in a tornado watch. One touched down in Sourville. A tornado? It was definitely storming outside. I had seen the black clouds roll in from the east earlier. But it didn't look that bad. Do not stay out in the open. I repeat, do not stay out in the open. There was a pause, then an explosion of sound as everyone began to mobilize. Carts rolling, panicked voices, feet slapping on the floor. No, 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 this can't be happening. I hurried down the toy aisle, Tucker in my arms, Daniel and Jackson following me. Three zigzaggy turns and then we were in the electronics area. I glanced at the TVs on the wall and pictured the four of us crushed underneath them. Stay away from windows and doors. The voice continued on the loudspeaker. And do not attempt to exit the store. Is this... is it safe here? Daniel shook his head. Big open areas aren't good. I'm going to go check in back, see if there's a break room or something. You stay here, okay? I nodded. Arms shaking, I sat down on the ground between two shelves of video games. Tucker sucked down a bottle in my arms while Jackson began to giggle. Is the tornado going to hit the store and everything will fly around real fast? He asked with a big stupid grin on his face. I don't know. A tornado. A real life tornado. Like you see in the movies, plowing through our town. It was so unfathomable. We were New York natives, transplanted here to Indiana only six months ago. I had never been in a tornado watch my entire life. Daniel jogged back into view. Everything's locked up. He said as he joined me on the floor. But listen, Fairview is a big town. The chance is that it'll hit this Walmart. I think we'll be okay. I never should have brought us here. Hey, you didn't know. None of us did. He wrapped his arm around me. They should have warned us. Like an emergency alert on our phones or something. Maybe a tornado siren. The voice overhead rang out again through the store. Do not stay out in the open. Do not make yourself visible. That includes security cameras. Please move to a spot that is not visible to any cameras. I frowned. What does that have to do with tornadoes? A feeling of unease in the pit of my stomach. I glanced up and saw several black globes descending from the ceiling, hiding the cameras within. I guess we should listen to them and get out of sight, I whispered, 
I grabbed Jackson's hand, Daniel picked up Tucker, and we jogged out into the center aisle. The store was an eerie sight. Abandoned shopping carts askew in the aisle, full of everything from pies to batteries to plans. Footsteps echoed around the store from people unseen as they found their new hiding places. We dodged a shopping cart full of soda, ran through kitchenwares, and then stopped in the Easter decoration aisle. There is a camera in the central corridor, but as long as we stayed in the middle of the Easter aisle, we would be invisible. The four of us crouched on the floor, next to some demented looking Easter bunnies. I'm hungry, Jackson whined. Shh, mommy. I grabbed a bag of colorful chocolate eggs and I ripped it open. Here, candy, happy, I whispered, thrusting them into his hands. And then I leaned back against the metal shelves, panting. But I didn't have long to rest. A mechanical whine overhead. And then the voice came through the speakers again. Keep away from aisles with food. If you have food with you, leave it and move to a new hiding place. If you have any open wounds, cover them with clothing. What the? That had nothing to do with keeping safe in a tornado. We should make a run for it. Daniel whispered to me, starting to stand. But... The tornado. I don't think there is a tornado. I mean, listen, do you hear any wind? I listened, but all I heard was silence. No howling wind, no shaking ground. No projectiles clanging against the metal roof. Maybe, maybe it's still coming. I know what they're saying doesn't make sense, but to go outside... We need to get out of here, now. He grabbed at Jackson's hand as he held Tucker in his arms. Come on. Daniel, I don't think that's a good idea, I whispered. But the next words from the intercom changed my mind. Assume a fetal position and place your hands on your head. Close your eyes and do not open them for any reason. Let's go. We broke into a sprint and ran down the central aisle. We didn't care about the cameras. The front door appeared in front of us, a little black rectangle looming in the distance. And as we got closer, I saw that Daniel was right. There is a tree at the border of the parking lot, underneath the street lamp. It was perfectly still. We continued running past the clothing area, past these snacks lined up at the checkout lines. I ran towards these sliding glass doors as fast as my legs would carry me. Almost there, almost there, almost. The doors didn't open. No, 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 no. Daniel slammed his body against the door. It rattled underneath him. I tried to squeeze my fingers into the gap between them to try and pull them apart. They didn't budge. They... they locked us in, I whispered. I want to go home, Jackson said. Tucker was beginning to fuss too, making little noises like he was about to start full on wailing. I turned around, and that's when I saw him. A Walmart employee... He was sitting on the ground at the end of one of the checkout aisles, facing away from us, wearing the familiar blue vest with a golden starburst. Hey, let us out. He didn't reply. Did you hear me? I don't care if there's a freaking tornado. Unlock the door and let us out. Again, he said nothing. But in the silence, I could hear something. A wet, smacking sound. I stared at the man, slightly hunched over, still facing away from me. Was he eating something? 
the speaker overhead crackled to life. Attention, please do not talk to any Walmart employees. My blood ran cold. The smacking sound stopped, and then slowly the man began to stand. He placed his palms on the conveyor belt and pushed up, and I could see that they were stained with blood. I backed away, but my legs felt like they were moving through a vat of honey. No, no, no. The fingers locked around my arm and yanked. Come on, Daniel shouted. I sprinted after him deeper into the store. Tucker stared at me over his shoulder, and Jackson ran as fast as his little feet would take him. I was vaguely aware of the slapping sound behind me, but I didn't dare look back. Daniel ran into the clothing area and I swayed, dodging circular racks of t-shirts and wooden displays of baby clothes. He skidded to a stop and ducked into the dressing room area. In here, he whispered, motioning at one of the rooms. We piled inside and we locked the door. Daddy, Jackson started. You listen to me very carefully, I said crouching to his level. You have to be absolutely silent. Do not say a word, okay? Jackson looked at me and then Daniel, and then he nodded and sat down on the floor. I'm going to try to call 911, Daniel whispered, transferring Tucker to me and pulling out his phone. He tapped at the screen and then frowned. We don't, we don't seem to have any service. I don't. A thump. I grabbed Jackson and pulled him away from the door. The four of us huddled in the corner. I held my breath. Thump. Under the gap of the dressing room door, men's feet in black shoes. They slowly took a step forward deeper into the dressing room. Don't move, I whispered, holding Jackson. The man took another step. Don't make another sound. Don't move. Don't. Tucker let out a soft cry. The man stopped. His feet turned, pointing at us. No, no. Tucker let out another cry, louder this time. My nails dug into Daniel's hand. No. A hand appeared. It slowly pressed against the floor as stained with blood. And then his knees appeared as he lowered himself down to the gap. No. Could he fit under her? The gap wasn't small. It was like a stall door to a bathroom. If he flattened himself against the floor, there's a chance that he could fit under her. I watched in horror as his stomach came into view. His blue Walmart vest as he lowered his body to the floor. And then he pushed his arm under the gap and blindly swept it across the floor. As if feeling for us. This is it. We're going to die. And then he lowered his head. His face. Oh God, there was something horribly wrong with his face. He smiled up at us with a smile that was impossibly wide, showing off blood-stained teeth. His skin was so pale that it was nearly blue. And his eyes, and they were milky white without pupils or irises. I opened my mouth to scream. Attention shoppers. The voice began overhead. Please make your way to the front of the store and make your final purchases. We will be closing in ten minutes. What? And then, before I could react, something unseen jerked the man out of view. A strange dragging sound followed as if somebody was dragging his body out of the dressing room area. I stared at the door shaking as Tucker's cries rang in my ears. But he didn't come back. And within 10 minutes, the usual hubbub of Walmart had returned. Voices, footsteps, a shopping car wheels rolling along the floor. 
Shaking, I finally got up and I unlocked the door. The store looked completely normal. People were lined up at the cash registers, placing their goods on the conveyor belts. Employees were scanning tags and printing receipts. People walked towards the glass doors and when they did, they slid open. As we slowly walked towards the exit, I spotted the older man who had warned us about the tornado earlier. What? What was that? I asked, unable to keep my voice from shaking. He shrugged. I guess the tornado missed us. What a miracle, huh? Giving us a smile, he disappeared out the glass doors and into the night. <laughs>